Hello, everyone. Jason Kenney has only been Alberta's premier for a month now, but he's been campaigning furiously across the country to try and win support for pipelines. There are two big decisions coming down this month. That's why he's launched a $30 million PR push to try to get Trans Mountain Pipeline approved and to make sure Bill 69, Trudeau's controversial new environmental review, doesn't kill any further pipelines. Kenny's he's got support from some powerful friends with deep pockets, and some of those friends are in the Senate. They've basically rewritten the bill to make it more friendly to the oil patch. The high stakes were on display this week in Ottawa. Kenny's energy minister flew to Parliament Hill for a pro-pipeline photo op. So we're here today to say yes to TMX. We're here today to ask the federal government to approve the project on June 18th. And it's not just those billboards and press conferences. When we Google Trans Mountain, the first thing to pop up is Kenny's ad, say yes to TMX. He wants his message spread across the country. But here's the thing, it's not just a public campaign. There's a lot going on behind the scenes too. Savage spent most of her Ottawa trip lobbying the Senate over Bill C-69, that review bill. The Senate? Yeah, it's no longer a rubber stamp. Since Trudeau made it a lot more independent, it's demanding a lot more influence, and the oil lobby has noticed. We looked through the registry and found that it lobbied senators over 100 times since they started looking at that bill, and Kenny was right along with them. He had lunch with a group of the senators from Alberta last week, and he testified in front of the Senate too. The campaign has been effective. The Senate is now recommending close to 200 changes to the bill. And Kenny says Alberta influenced 160 of them. CBC News checked and found that some of the changes are word for word what the oil industry asked for. So now Kenny is saying he'll support the bill if, and it's a big if, all the changes recommended by the Senate are approved. One of the senators at the forefront of all of this is Doug Black. He's an independent senator from Alberta. It used to be that the Senate, because they were controlled by the caucus mm -hmm. or, the, or the leader, uh, <clears throat> were pretty much a rubber stamp mm -hmm. for, for the government. Not anymore. Not anymore. Is, uh, but part of that is because mm -hmm. you are being lobbied. You are, you are listening to other people, including the lobbyist. Is that a good thing? You know, I hear, I get that question a lot, Wendy. Well, you know that the no, lobbyists, I, they, they consider that this is great, that the, that the Senate is, is ripe to listen to their arguments. Is well, that good? I don't know their view. I'll tell you my view. I know what I know, and I know what I don't know. So I always welcome the opportunity to talk to folks, whether they're registered lobbyists or my neighbours or people that I meet in your studio today. I welcome the opportunity because that's when you learn. We, uh, well, we checked the, the lobby registry because we were curious because sure. it's, it's changing. The, mm -hmm. the Senate mm -hmm. gets lobbied a lot now. Heavily. Uh, and so we looked at you and, the, and sure. the oil lobby and it turns out like basically half of all of the groups that lobbied you were mm -hmm. the, the oil industry. So mm -hmm. groups like the, the oil lobby cap, Husky, Imperial Sonova, mm -hmm. some of the biggest mm -hmm. 30, 33 meetings you've had with them since this bill came mm -hmm. to the floor of the, of mm -hmm. the Senate. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of lobbying. Um, it sounds like a lot. It isn't that much. What I need to do when I'm talking to folks is I need to test what is required for you to do business in this country. To build How many a environmental groups did you hear from? We couldn't I don't find know. You, any. You have that information there. I don't know. We couldn't but find any. We found the 33 oil industry groups mm -hmm. and lobbies, but we couldn't find any environmental groups. That well, I don't. I mean, the answer is I don't know. I've certainly met with environmental groups. I'm surprised that's not there. Well, there is one, the Nuclear Association. It's a, some people would see, I suppose, as an environmental. No, group. I wouldn't well, see they, them they as they that. They say there. But it, it, the important thing is that I think I endeavor to be balanced. Because for projects to be built, not only must there be a proponent, such as an energy company, but we have to ensure that the environmental standards that we all demand are met at the highest level. You were invited to a lunch. You attended a lunch May 23rd mm -hmm. uh, with the, the, the premier, the former premier. Mm -hmm. What looks like it was about strategy on this issue. Mm -hmm. what, can you tell me what you talked about? Absolutely. This was a lunch that Premier Kenny and the former Premier Notley uh, convened in Edmonton 
for all of the existing uh, senators, the six senators of Alberta, which is incidentally so constructive. It is the first time we've ever met as a group, hmm. and it's certainly the first time that the Premier has convened them. But it sounds like you're trying to figure out strategy to get your agenda through, and, and Trudeau seems to be in your way, at least on Bill C-69, or his government doesn't sound like they want to agree yeah, no, to all uh, of your uh, what, amendments. What we talked about, the, the first thing, what we talked about is how do we ensure that our message around the need for projects to be built and investment to be made how do we continue to communicate that in a constructive way? So how way? do you? It doesn't sound like it's going to get through on Bill C-69. I'm not sure of that. Hmm. I, when it first came to the Senate, unamended, many people said, no, 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 no. This is a foregone conclusion. Don't waste your time. Well, we've wasted our time for a year, and we're up to 200 amendments that make this a better bill that allows Canadian companies, and therefore Canadian workers, to work again. We have to recognize that there have been no pipelines, for example, approved or major transmission lines approved in this country for over a decade. How powerful is Jason Kenney? Like, can, can he change the way the rest of the country sees Alberta's oil patch? How powerful is he? Uh, he's, he this is, he's not a one-man show. He's a very effective politician and he's a very very hard worker and he understands the issues but he needs support he's got support from the oil industry he he's has got support now from the senate he has support from the senate huge support which is very important to your earlier point this is not our father's senate this is a Senate that recognizes we have a serious responsibility. And gets we've, lobbied like the other We've rolled <laughs> up our sleeves. Oh, of course we do. But I'm, I'm not one of these people that says lobbying equals bad. I'm saying lobbying equals information. Then I process it. And I decide, was that helpful or was that unhelpful? You know, and th that's fair enough. But to your point, how effective is Jason? He's effective part of a team. And that team involves the premier. Well, I'll tell you, 69. Eight premiers across this country are opposed to 69 unless it's amended. Three territorial leaders. Well, that's the majority of the political, provincial establishment in this country. And so Jason's one member of that team. Well, we'll be watching to see what happens. It's been so nice so to talk much. to you. Thank you very much, Wendy. Senator Doug Black. You know, at the end of the day, this whole campaign is also about setting the stage for the federal election, and the ultimate target could be Justin Trudeau. Kenny told the Globe and Mail he plans to actively campaign for Conservative leader Andrew Scheer in Ontario this summer, where the party needs to pick up a lot of seats if they're going to form the next government. It's not the first time an Alberta politician and a Trudeau have gone head-to-head. -head. We've seen this battle before, but this time it's Alberta versus Trudeau round two. I will be very clear with the Prime Minister uh, that uh, if this bill and, the, and Bill C-48 are adopted in anything like their current form, that this will be inflaming a growing national unity problem in Alberta and will be a body blow to our country's prosperity. National unity? We haven't heard an Alberta Premier talk that way since the other Trudeau was Prime Minister and brought in the National Energy Program back in 1980 important that the Canadian government have a little piece of the action on behalf of the Canadian people. Pierre Trudeau argued he was taking more control of Alberta oil to benefit all Canadians. But that sure isn't how it went over in Alberta. Bumper stickers saying let the eastern bastards freeze in the dark are now collector's items. It even spurred a western separatist movement. These days, it's Justin Trudeau being pitched as the villain in Alberta. Since he took office in 2015, five major energy projects have died. Then there's the carbon tax and tougher regulations for expanding the oil patch. Trudeau says he's trying to save the environment for all Canadians, but again, a lot of Albertans are hurting, out of work, and furious. If Justin Trudeau is a friend of Alberta, I, ha I hate to see an enemy of this process. <laughs> And the battle is on. So how will this battle between Jason Kenney and Justin Trudeau play out in the months to come? Well, I'm joined by the former interim leader of the Conservative Party, Ronna Ambrose. She's in Calgary. So, Ronna, it, it is somewhat unusual for a provincial leader to take on a, on a national campaign like this. Do you think that Jason Kenney can win over the rest of the country on this issue? Well, I think... I think this, this crisis in the Federation 
uh, has actually created a national debate that has been positive for the resource sector. There's more people in this country that now understand the amount of money and jobs that are created by the natural resource sector across this country, particularly the oil and gas sector, and the importance of ending this ridiculous situation that we're in by selling our oil at a discount because we only have one market, which is the United States. Getting our oil offshore and selling it to Asia and other um, other regions is extremely important so that we don't continue to lose $90 billion a year in revenue, in tax revenue, um, because we can't get it offshore. So I think that it's a positive argument to make. I think it's working in a lot of different regions in this country. I think that Premier Kenny was elected on a platform to fight for jobs in Alberta and fight for pipelines and make the case. And so that's exactly what he's doing. And he's finding allies, not only in other conservative premiers, but in a lot of the business community that understands that if we can't get large projects built, it affects the competitiveness of the entire country. Premier Kenny talks a lot about national unity, he talks a lot about a crisis. He's even talked about a poll about showing some Albertans believe in secession. Isn't there a danger? Yes. Isn't there a danger there? Well, I think that he's raising the alarm. And I have also, as, as have many other people in Alberta, there is, there is a serious issue happening in Alberta. And thankfully, we just had a provincial election and we're far away from another one because there was such a, a rise in separatist sentiment that I was concerned that we could see, well, we saw an independence party come out of nowhere um, and they didn't have a chance to get, uh, you know, to really get a foothold, but we've never seen higher levels of separatist sentiment and secession sentiment in Alberta, and it's real. The anger is palpable, and I think the fact that he was elected on a very strong mandate and he's out fighting in a way that I think Albertans expected him to do. If we're able to get this pipeline approved, which I think the federal government will do and get it built, that will be very helpful. Um, but, his, but his mandate is also to continue to educate other premiers, other Canadians, other business people uh, that we need to, to, to remain uh, economically competitive with the rest of the, the world. And when we have a regulatory framework and a tax regime that continues to hurt and hinder the oil and gas sector, we just, we can't be competitive.